So I promised I would do this video and that's exactly what we're doing. I was just waiting for the Panthers to do all the trading that they were going to do. So as you guys probably know, Christian McCaffrey no longer a member of the Carolina Panthers. He has been traded. However, despite much speculation and a ton of rumors, Brian Burns was not traded. Apparently teams like the Rams offered multiple first round picks, but you have to imagine those are back into the first round. Uh, although... Rams haven't been too great this year. Lack of a pass rush is a big reason why. Uh, even Aaron Donald is not up to his usual standard, which is still, you know, a top player in the league, regardless of not being maybe the very best player. Uh, but I think the Panthers made the right call because you have a bona fide superstar edge rusher in Brian Burns. Those are tough to find. And is two first round picks going to be a guarantee to replace him? So I think the Panthers are probably confident they can get an extension with Brian Burns. They're going to have the finances to do it. I think it was a good move to keep him. That is a building block on defense in the same way that DJ Moore is a building block on offense. However, the rest of the team surrounding those two players could use some improvement, especially at the quarterback position. We're going to rebuild the Panthers and hopefully find our future quarterback, and our Christian McCaffrey replacement, and I think they already did in Deontay Foreman, Hook'em Horns. Let's get into it. So let's talk about this team. Baker Mayfield got benched for P.J. Walker. Sam Darnold is still uh, not good. So quarterback is a big problem. Baker, man, it's kind of just a tough career so far. Uh, he had some really, really great quarterback play at times with the Browns, but it was like every other season he was either really good, trending that way at least, or really terrible, but he had the... Uh, the torn labrum he played through, he's a number of injuries, but this year, you know, for whatever reason, uh, he's just really bad, and we're gonna have to move on from Baker. Uh, we could trade him. He's probably got some decent trade value in the game. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how realistic that is that anyone would want Baker, but we might try to facilitate a trade for like a mid-round pick or something, package somebody else in. Uh, Austin Corbett has played really, really well for the Panthers this year. Taylor Roten just is good. Obviously, as you'd expect with a rookie offensive tackle, you know, Ike Mekwanu, Ike has had his struggles this year, but he's probably someone that will end up being quite good, whether it's at left tackle or guard. He, he should end up being good. He was a really solid prospect coming out of NC State. Brady Christensen, former tackle, moved to guard. A little bit older. He was an older rookie. Of course, the BYU guy, so he's only in year two and he's 25, but he's okay for now. Bradley Bozeman got signed. He's okay for now, but I'd like to improve the offensive line. Tommy Tremble is going to start for me at tight end. Of course, the team traded for LaVisca Chenault. He might develop okay in this. DJ Moore is definitely a beast, but we could use a really good third receiver. I'd like to think that Terrace Marshall will end up developing, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen in Madden. And then, of course, you have Chuba Hubbard and Deontay Foreman. Got to start my guy, Deontay Foreman. And then defensively, I think... I mean, Shaq Thompson, I'm kind of surprised to not see him get traded. He's good, but he's also, you know, getting a little bit older now at 28. I don't really think he's going to be a part of the Panthers rebuild, but they didn't trade him. I don't know if they even tried to trade him or if there were any suitors. His contract is expiring pretty soon. He's getting paid quite a bit of money. That's a huge cap hit in 2023 for an off-ball linebacker that isn't even one of the best in the league. Frankie Louvu is a decent player. But we could improve the linebacking core overall. There are some fun, exciting young players like Amari Barno, but who's to say if he'll ever be great? Derek Brown has played very, very well this year. Matt Ioannidis here, Yatura Gross Matos. Brian Burns, we talked about a little bit, is a beast. And I like the cornerback group. We have Dante Jackson, J.C. Horn, and C.J. Henderson. I think J.C. Horn is the best of the bunch, but he is not exactly rated super high. But we'll see how he uh, continues to play. Missed a lot of last season. So hopefully he can just continue to stay healthy and play well. And then in the back end of the secondary, we have Xavier Woods and Jeremy Chin. Jeremy Chin could end up playing linebacker for us. I could definitely move him to inside linebacker in Madden and feel pretty good about it. So that's at least on the table. But I think let's go ahead, simulate to at least the midseason mark and maybe think about a trade at that point. Maybe Baker's on the move. Maybe I'll trade Shaq Thompson. I know they didn't make any of these trades in real life up to this point. I imagine nobody wanted Baker, and maybe they didn't even try to trade Shaq Thompson. I'm not sure. But at the midseason mark, I might try to trade one or both of those players, if not even more. 
Now, we are 4-3 and three at the midseason mark. The Panthers do have some of the best playbooks in Madden Simulation, period. And apparently, Baker Mayfield was incredible this past week. Dude, Baker cannot be our quarterback going forward. He just can't be, right? <laughs> Seems like he might be, though. He could get superstar dev even coming, uh, uh, coming back after a loss. So, do I trade Baker now if he could get superstar dev? I probably do anyway. I don't know, man. I'm trading Baker and I'm getting rid of Sam Darnold's cap hit, sending them to the Colts for a second round pick next year. I know you'd never see a two quarterback trade like this, but I'm doing it. Complain if you want. Baker Mayfield. There were rumors that he was going to go to the Colts. Never ended up materializing. Now, maybe a little bit more realistic, but I also just wanted to trade a Sam Darnold, get his cap hit off the books. So that frees us up a ton more. And I'll probably explore a trade for Shaq Thompson at least. Try and clear a little bit more cap that way. Taylor Moten I want to keep. I think the rest of the roster I pretty much want to keep. If I can package Shaq Thompson and Xavier Woods maybe to a potential contender. The Chiefs could do something with the Chiefs. They're actually not performing that well. But it is a midseason mark. Things could change. We're going to go ahead and try to get a first round pick. We'll have to give up a little bit more. But these would be helpful. Will a fourth round pick do it? I don't think so. It is close, though. Takes a future three, but Shaq Thompson, Xavier Woods, and that future three are headed to the Chiefs. Chiefs are trying to win a Super Bowl, obviously. We are getting their first round pick. It probably won't end up being as high as 14, but that trade had to happen. Shaq Thompson's cool. I know he's been a lifetime Panther, and you can't say that about too many players. You know, I've seen multiple contracts with the Panthers lately. But you know what? He's just getting a little bit older. I don't really think he's going to be a part of this rebuild. We'd rather have the first round pick. So that's what happened there. And as for players, we'd have to resign. I don't want Matt Ioannidis back. Probably don't want Deontay Foreman. Bradley Bozeman's only on a one-year deal. Yeah, I don't want anybody in here. We're just going to go ahead and simulate to the end of the season. And, uh... Figure out what to do there. I'll probably do some scouting, or at least assign some scouts, and I'll see you guys at the, ooh, quarterback. Is the strength of the national region? I'm in. I'm in. Focus scouting quarterback. I'll see you guys at the end of season one, or regular season one. We could be a playoff team. And we did make the playoffs. Eagles went 12 and five. We went 10 and seven. And as I said, this is really the strength of the playbook shining through. Now, the offense was not great, but... You got to remember, we don't really have good players on offense. The offensive line is so-so. And, I mean, we're, we're starting P.J. Walker, and as much as I like him, Deontay Foreman at running back. Like, this is not a great tandem. And we're still a playoff team, which we've seen way better rebuild teams perform, you know, nowhere near as well. So, the Panthers' playbooks are just good. P.J. Walker, you know, got to keep in mind that he didn't play the entire season. Kind of like what's going to happen in real life this year. Deontay Foreman was very bad, as was Chuba Hubbard in terms of yards per carry. Uh, less than three and a half is abysmal. But yet he got close to a thousand yards. Guess it was pretty good, right? No. Receiving DJ Moore, about 1,200 yards, three touchdowns. Average 70 per game. It's not terrible. Uh, I think, in fact, that is quite good. LaVisca Chenault, though. Decent production. You'd like to see more touchdowns from DJ Moore is the only thing, but our quarterback just really wasn't throwing too many of them. And then Damian Wilson led the team in tackles with 114 tackles for loss. Brian Burns, 13 with 18 sacks. Great year. 13 for Derek Brown. Derek Brown's really, really good. 10 for Yatur Gross Matos. And then Frankie Luvu had 12 sacks. Now, outside linebacker in the Panthers system, you know what it was? He might have been a rush end for us over Yatur Gross Matos if I had to bet. I think that's probably what happened because the Panthers rock a 4-3 and you just really wouldn't see Frankie Luvu rushing the passer too much in the base defense, but I think he must have been a rush end. Yes, he was. So it seems like this defensive playbook is going to be really, um, I, I would say, conducive to sacks. So, I uh, will see if we can just get through this first playoff stretch. 
don't really have too many big aspirations. But remember, the playbooks are pretty good, so the Panthers might just end up playing really well. See if we can get through the, the Eagles. But this is just a rebuild. This is season one. My aspirations, as nice as it would have been to go to the Super Bowl in year one, uh, I don't think that's especially realistic of what the Panthers will do and what their team looks like. So uh, as much as I'm not glad to get knocked out in the playoffs round one, I also, in a way, am because it can show growth over time as hopefully we actually build a team that's worthy of winning in the playoffs. So as much as it would have been nice, now we have something to really build toward as Josh Allen wins MVP, Robert Sala, Coach of the Year, Cooper Cup, as always, wins Offensive Player of the Year, and Von Miller has been winning Defensive Player of the Year in a lot of these rebuilds. Garrett Wilson and Aiden Hutchinson are your Rookies of the Year, and as the Saints beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, Jameis Winston wins Super Bowl MVP. So as I said, Chiefs pushing for a Super Bowl, uh, and it seems like they really turned their season around after a bit of a rough start. You know, they were projected to be somewhere around the middle of the first round. We give them Shaq Thompson, and now they are a Super Bowl losing team. So they made it all the way there. We'll have the 31st pick in the draft as a, re as a result. And I think also probably somewhere in the early 20s, maybe like 22 because of our own pick. But we'll go ahead and uh, advance to the re-signing period. I don't think there's going to be anybody in here worth re-signing. We didn't go out and make any trades. It's just not where our team is right now. And what a crazy trade deadline, by the way. We never see that in the NFL just because... It's so much more difficult compared to baseball or basketball even, but especially baseball because that's a, a really individual sport as much as it's a team game. It's really go up there and hit or go out there and pitch. Not much changes organization to organization. There's different philosophy on pitching, but in football, if you're a corner, it could be very, very different. Obviously, there are others are those man-heavy teams. Hey, just go out, go on an island and cover that receiver. Maybe you travel with them, etc. But then there are some super zone-heavy teams. Uh, there are some teams that just totally do things differently. You got to learn the entire playbook, and then offensively, still you got to learn the entire playbook. It's super, super important. That's why you don't really see so many trades in the NFL. But this was very different. We saw a ton of them this year. Uh, some of them won't have impact until next year at the earliest, like Calvin Ridley. But some of them, I mean, TJ Hawkinson could be on a Vikings playoff run here. We could see Christian McCaffrey make a big impact with the 49ers. We could see Bradley Chubb make a big impact with the Dolphins down the stretch here as we approach the playoffs. So this was a huge a trade deadline, and that's not even all of the trades. There were even more, of course, but I can't imagine I'm going to re-sign anybody. We have $82 million. Yeah, we're just going to let these guys walk. We have money. I don't want to waste it signing backups. I want to go out and make the team better. And the way to do that is spend money in free agency on one or two players that can really help you. And we'll try to do that. I'll also look at the draft class, see the combine results. Jordan Poyer's in here. He would be an upgrade. He is 32. He does have interest in the team is a really good scheme fit. I would offer him a deal, maybe a two-year deal. This really isn't too expensive. I think that's a pretty reasonable offer. Don't like really need him. We could move Jeremy Chen over, but he's just a good player to add. James Robinson. James Robinson could be good. Now, I wouldn't want to give him any type of long-term deal, but maybe a two-year deal would be okay. And I'm not really sure what his interest is going to be like. Seems like he might go to Miami. Another Texas Longhorn. Deshaun Elliott has no offers right now. I know I just offered Jordan Poyer, who we might end up getting. Deshaun Elliott is only 26 years old. Might be able to get him for cheap. And if we got both new safeties, Deshaun Elliott go, could go play free safety. Jordan Poyer at strong safety if we do get him. And then we can move Jeremy Chin to linebacker, which could end up being a really good fit. I'm trying to go after players with interest in the team. So, I mean, another good fit could be Rashad Penny because we might not get James Robinson. So I might offer another two-year deal. Penny wants to be a member of the Panthers and isn't really getting a ton of interest so we'll offer on him and maybe one more player that could help us out not julian love maybe somebody on the defensive line not deron Payne. maybe tier tart yeah let's offer tier tart a contract a little bit too much money for me and he doesn't want to be here anyway uh, but we'll see what happens with that so we signed tier tart right away See some other big signings. James Robinson does, uh, does end up going to the Dolphins. 
Still have our same targets. Seems like the Eagles might go ahead and take Jordan Poyer. No, but we got him. Okay. That's not bad for two years. Salary approaching 13 mil. And I would still be interested in signing Deshaun Elliott. However, the Eagles are in on him now. It seems like we're pretty much out of those sweepstakes. Could still sign Rashad Penny. Yeah, Deshaun Elliott looks like he's headed to Philadelphia. And that's exactly what happened. And Rashad Penny, we'll see. But it seems like we're probably going to be out on him now unless we offer more money. If the draft class has a good running back, we'll see. But otherwise, I might increase my offer on him. Although... Four of the top five projected players are quarterbacks, and two of those four have top five true talent. So it looks like we might be trading up for a quarterback. Could be a high chance of that happening. So this is actually really interesting. I think Steven Beach might end up being the guy. But, okay, so top five talent, top five talent on batch. Tyrone Samuels is a field general type with A medium, A short, Accuracy, A, throw under pressure, B, deep accuracy, throw power is good, not really the fastest, but that's around two to three talent. Kind of makes me think the rest of the class is good. Thad Dodson, only C, deep accuracy, but A, medium, A, short, B, throw under pressure, elite throw power, not the best athlete. A, trucking, doesn't really matter. But Steven Beach just seems like probably the best of the bunch. A deep accuracy is great, obviously. B medium, B short, A throw under pressure, elite throw power. He's a pretty good athlete. I think he's going to be the one. A play action. It usually is pretty low, I feel like. B break sack. I just think he's going to be the best player and we'll probably end up having to move up for him. But uh, I wonder what the rest of the talent looks like in this class because if we're starting off, with a quarterback that looks good as around two to three talent. I'm surely that's like a 74 overall. I mean, the rest of the class has to be great. And this defensive end, Shamir Burgess, looks phenomenal. Unbelievable athlete with A awareness, A finesse moves, A tackle, B power moves. I'd like to be able to get both of those players already just after seeing two. I think they both look really, really good. Also, this linebacker down the board, I say down on the board, he was round one to two. Third linebacker. He looks really good. Was hoping he'd be a bit further down so he'd have a better chance to land him. But no, unfortunately not. Might be tough. This right guard, round two to three projection. Pretty good athlete. Elite for acceleration, agility, change of direction, jumping, whatever. Good speed. Great strength. I'm interested. A run block finesse. A lead block. Javon Shivers. Shiver be Timbers, he could be pretty good. I apologize for that, in a way. <laughs> but, uh, man, he... Not bad. This seems like it could be a decent class. I'm pretty excited. I think we could get a lot better this year. We just don't have the picks, unfortunately. We don't have the picks. Okay, so the, the two guys that I need to be in position to draft the most, it's the quarterback at number one. He's probably going to be the number one overall pick. It's going to be tough to move up. But I think the future of our team depends on it. I think there are good day two or day three running backs we can target just to fill that role. And I think that we'll probably just have to pass on some of the other good looking players. Like, I mean, there are some good offensive linemen I like. I think we maybe could get in position to land them on day two, but it will take a lot to move up to number one and then maybe even number three or number four were the players that I want in the draft. It's going to be really difficult as Shamir Burgess is actually projected to go number one overall. Well, that's a player I want a lot. I would definitely be willing to trade Jaturkros Matos to get him. He looks unbelievable. And sometimes in these, if you guys have never seen these before, I do realistic ones as well. Those have their own title, realistics in the thumbnail. Um, but in these, we're just kind of having fun with the game. I like to draft the really, really good players. I'm okay with trading somebody like Yutur Gross Matos to land a Shamir Burgess. And I want Steven Beach. So it seems like we're going to need two of the top three picks, if not the top two picks in the draft. And the Lions have two of those, by the way. We might be able to work something out. If I can get picks two and three, I can trade up to one very easily. 
But yeah, I just don't know how that happens right now. I'm gonna figure it out for the private workouts. It doesn't make sense to do Shamir Burgess or anybody like that. Like we know he's already really good. This linebacker looks like he could be really good. I mean, this would be a good consolation prize if I can't move up into the top five twice. I, I have to be able to do it at least once. So the linebacker may be someone I want a little bit more information about. And then, you know, maybe some of these offensive linemen, I think, could be the one. Javon Shivers I like, but more information would not be the worst thing. And then maybe one of these uh, interior offensive linemen down the board, I would say maybe... Maybe Trent Edgar. Let's do them. Yeah, Mock Draft 5 has Burgess and Beach. One and two. I think those are the two best players in the draft. So, I'd like to get both. Really would. We do have two first round picks. They're just lower. It's, it's going to be early to mid 20s and then 31. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very difficult. 19. A little bit higher than I thought. But still, uh, you know, we have our work cut out for us in moving up. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a challenge. Now, the way that I think I'm gonna try out first is uh, three first round picks. I'd be comfortable with this trade. It's close, it's not quite there. 19, 31, and six can't get it done, but it's close. If I can package 31, I wanna keep the second round pick. We do have two twos next year, but I think uh, it's just, it's. Just, I, I, can I trade any player? Matt Corral on roster, probably not going to trade him. Brandon Smith. I didn't even talk about the Panthers draft class. I really like their draft class from 2021 or the 2022 draft. A lot of great athletes. Okay, this is the trade I'm doing. Yuturgros Matos number 31 and a second round pick next year that we traded for for number 14 in the draft, and a seventh round pick next year. The seventh round was the absolute best other thing I could get in that trade. So we've moved up a little bit, but now we're going to try and move up a lot. Okay, that's going to be the trade. Number six, number 19, number 14. Number six is projected next year. So our first round pick next year is gone, but I think we're going to be a lot better because we're going to get two really good players here. We move up to two and three, but with number three, I'm going to have to move up to number one. And uh, I don't think that's going to be that difficult to do. I wanted more mid-round picks. I think I was able to keep, you know, a decent bit. One, two next year. Already didn't have the three. And kept the two this year. And then three. I'd, I'd like to keep the fourth rounder. Because I'm still going to want to move up. I, I like some of those mid-round uh, interior offensive linemen. And we could use an upgrade. But I think these two top players at the top of the class are just too good to not try and go after. Okay, number three and a five gets me number one. Pretty sweet trade. Here we go. <laughs> we are finally going to make our first selection of the draft. Doesn't matter the order that we do it, but I am going to take the quarterback at number one overall. Steven Beach, strong arm with great deep accuracy. Now his player notes, um, one kind of scares me abandons initial reads in favor of the check down abandons never sounds good but i don't know how that's going to play in simulation we'll find out he's got an elite arm he looks fairly mobile and the accuracy seems good seems like he's good under pressure as well he's got 98 throw power 81 speed but 98 throw power i would say is significant Hopefully he has a superstar or superstar X factor as opposed to star dev, but star dev's not too bad, especially if they put up good numbers in year one, they can easily, easily go up to the next level. And then Shamir Burgess has to be the second pick. Only C block shed, but I don't actually think that's too bad. A finesse moves, B power moves, A tackle. He's an amazing athlete. And um, I think he's gonna be a great pick for us. And he is hidden dev. 86 strength, which is really high, 86 speed, 85 jumping, 85 agility, 88 acceleration, only 70 change of direction, but I don't think that's too bad among defensive linemen. That's real good. And I think we'll simulate to uh, the middle of the second round now. I think 
We just got the two best players in the draft. We're going to find out later, of course. And uh, we'll see what's available here midway through the second round. Hopefully, some of the players I have watched, the running backs, Javon Shivers is available. Javon Shivers is going to be my guy here. A awareness, A impact block, B pass block's pretty good. Great athlete. And uh, we saw the skills earlier. They look really good. Run block power and pass block power are low. But it's going to have to be okay. We're drafting them. Does have hidden dev. 89 strength. 81 jumping. I don't know why I keep pointing that out. 68 speed's pretty good. 73 agility is really good. 84 acceleration. And he's doing like the superstar X Factor pose. So maybe he's going to be a beast. Our next pick comes in the fourth round. Of the players I have left on my board, do I want any of these players? Now, Trent Edgar looks really good. Probably should get this guy, right? Starting center. Again, the power is a little bit low. But do I really care? Round three to four projection. Tyler May, probably about the same. He also looks quite good. I think I would, I would prefer the center. I think I would. So as long as he doesn't get taken in like the first few picks of the third round, I should be able to move up, I think, pretty easily. Let's see where he is on the board in terms of all centers. Second, so he really could go before J.C. Hookland. Definitely possible, which uh, frightens me a little bit. But uh, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't. Okay, there goes J.C. Hookland. I think I'm going to try and trade up with the Vikings here. Okay, we're going to trade Matt Corral. We have our quarterback of the future. No need for Corral. He's headed to Minnesota. We're trading a fourth round pick this year, which I didn't want to have to give up, but it just had to be done. And a sixth round pick next year. We've really traded a lot of our picks in favor of moving up here, but I think it's worth it. When you can find that player that really is going to be worth the pick, you got to do it. And Trent Edgar seems to be worth moving up for. Starting center of the future. Does have hidden dev. Love to see it. 85 strength. 76 speeds. Pretty good. 85 accelerations. Fantastic. Change of direction is pretty poor. But overall, I think he looks really good. We have two hidden dev interior offensive linemen. We'll just simulate to the sixth round now. And uh, hopefully one of those running backs is there for depth that I liked. But uh, no telling if they will or not. Oh, there is one here. Jason Edwards from Northern Illinois. A, ball carrier vision. B, break tackle. Looks okay, I guess. And uh, we'll take him. There were other running backs that looked a little bit better. He doesn't look too bad, though, for 5'11", 232 pounds. Good strength. Acceleration looks great. Agility is pretty good. Hopefully, I'll show you guys one of the running backs down the board I was looking at. Because there was one that was a power back that looked actually pretty quick. I thought it would have been a good pick. And this defensive tackle is available with A finesse moves. He's not really good at anything else. But maybe for a rush D tackle, won't be bad. Last pick of the draft is Gregory Richards. And uh, he only has normal dev. Strength isn't great. Speed's okay. Acceleration's pretty good. But we know what he is. He's not an every down defensive tackle. He is a pure pass rush specialist with the finesse moves being high. And that's all we need him to do. Draft recap. We've done well. A quarterback at 80 overall is extremely rare to find in the draft. That is a really, really good pick. Morale's playing down, but he is an 80. 98 throw power, 85 deep accuracy, 79 medium, 82 short. Awareness is a 79. Throw on the run, 76. Play action, 81. Throw under pressure, 77. Break sacks, a 79. Athletically seems pretty good. Decent speed, acceleration, agility, and change of direction. And uh, he should be the guy. Has the tight spiral trait, ideal sense of pressure, conservative forcing passes. I think he's abandoned uh, the the read for the check down. Charismatic style, throwaway trait, ideal sense of pressure. I think he's going to be pretty good. He likes historic championships. We don't really fit that mold at the moment. Shamir Burgess is a 79, playing up to an 80. One of the higher overall uh, defensive ends I've actually seen in the draft this year. So I'm pretty happy with this pick. 75 power moves, 79 finesse moves. Pretty good, not crazy, but pretty good, I would say. 86 speeds, great. 88 acceleration. Block shedding and play rec only at 69. Nice. 86 strength. Tackling's playing up. Agility's really high for a defensive end. Pursuit hit power all looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he seems pretty good. I wouldn't say amazing, but he seems good. 
from Oklahoma. Where do you go to school? West Virginia? That's a rarity. West Virginia must be paying out the big bucks. Javon Shivers is a 75 overall. That is very good. 75 agile. Strength is so great. Lead block, impact block, all super high. Good athlete. Run block and pass block need to be improved quite a bit, but I think that's a really good pick. Trent Edgar probably starts right away with that hidden dev. Pass block, run block, good. Impact blocking's a 90. Lead block and strength both at uh, 85. Acceleration too. Speed's great. Stamina is amazing. And then the picks down the board, you know, weren't too good. The running backs always look better. Like he doesn't look like a 65 overall when you see his, his attributes there. So it's always kind of funny to see that because you're like, how, how is he a 65? When none of his core attributes are even in the 60s or even that close to the 60s. Spin move is, but yeah, I don't know how 65 happens. So he could be okay as a change of pace back. Let's see the rest of the class. So we did, we did get the uh, top two guys. Matt Batch, the other top five QB was a 77. Nate Day, day two receiver with 76 overall. Running back Mario Collins, not someone that I'm talking about with the running backs, is a 76 as well. But it seems to be a very deep draft class. I want to see some of these running backs. I had some on my radar on day two that just looked to be, you know, really good. I think Willie Harold was the one. Round five, he was a power back. 70 overall with decent speed. Yeah, he just looks really solid. And that's just kind of what you see with uh, the running backs this year. They're all kind of, I don't want to say uh, indistinguishable, but it's kind of the word that comes to mind. Owen Wiener. No way. There's a Vince Carter. The human highlight reel. And he's got hidden dev. He also looks really, really good. Vince Carter. 72 power back and elusive back with star or better development down the board. Does he have star? Yes, of course he does. But definitely a great draft for us. I think we're in a really good position. Of course, I'm doing this offline to avoid all the numerous glitches. And it really, I don't know, doesn't seem to be simulating that slowly. So I think this just might be the move anyway. Iki Aquanu does have superstar dev. And uh, I think our team's going to look a lot better this year. Two scheme fits on the interior of the offensive line. I am probably going to have to swap Shivers and Corbett because Corbett's listed at right guard. I'm going to move. He looks frightening, by the way. I know that's not what he actually looks like, but uh, we're going to move him to left guard. He played left guard with the Rams. Um, but yeah, still scheme fit, of course. Team looks pretty good on offense. Need an addition at running back and hopefully an upgrade. Burgess is going to be great. I like the defensive line. I like the corners. Safeties are going to be good because uh, I'm going to move Jeremy Chin over. I think I'll just keep him at safety. Like, he definitely could play linebacker for us, but not this year. I'm going to leave him at safety for now. I'll just move him to the other side. So we have decent safeties. I like the defensive line in the corner. So linebacker, just really the only group that I could improve upon. Like Frankie Luvu, Brandon Smith is such a freak athlete that if we can develop him, it's going to be amazing. He's got 88 speed, 91 acceleration. Block shedding is actually pretty good. Coverage isn't so bad. We might be able to develop Brandon Smith quite a bit. I just have to make sure that Jeremy uh, Jeremy Chin is not the sub linebacker and that um, it's probably, what do you think? Frankie Luvu and Brandon Smith. Yeah, I think we'll do that. So I'll simulate to the regular season and then I'll change the depth chart around. And then we'll simulate to the midseason mark. Might fire my scouts because we have our quarterback. I mean, there's no scenario where this quarterback doesn't develop. There's just not. So we have our QB. We'll focus on linebacker probably. It really seems like the one true weak point of the team. Wide receiver maybe too, but linebacker. So we could draft a corner potentially. I like the idea of one of the strengths being wide receiver and look at the weaknesses, the entire interior of the offensive line. So we did a really good job to trade up when we needed to. However, it is a little bit unfortunate that we just don't have picks. So I guess we're going to need good players down the board. I guess watch Cassidy Peel. 
be generational. R, five and two at the midseason mark. Our offense is not performing that great, but our defense is one of the best in the league right now. And I think the big problem is our lack of an elite running back in this Carolina offense. However, this receiver, DJ Moore, could go up to superstar X Factor. We couldn't see a picture of him, so I had no idea who they were talking about. But we are five and two, and our offense really has not been very good. So I think an offensive playbook change could take this team over the top. Beach only has star development. Was hoping for more, obviously, but star isn't too bad. As we talked about it before, you know, if he continues to play well, he's going to go up probably to superstar with winning offensive rookie of the year. But we need to put up better numbers in order for that to happen. Both of the interior offensive linemen have star dev and our defensive end has superstar. So that's a big win, and he's already really good as it is. Hasn't really developed much, but I have high hopes for him. Ooh, what just happened? What just happened? I have high hopes for... I don't even know... I don't even know what accent just broke out there. I felt like I just turned into a leprechaun for a minute. I don't know where that came from. I can promise you. Uh, it was unintentional. I have high hopes for him. I, I did. I apologize. Uh, our quarterbacks played fairly well, but the the passing yard numbers could be a lot higher. Yeah, we got to change the playbook until we get an elite running back, which I don't know if that's going to happen. Let's go spread KC. It is. That should be highly productive or Beach should be. There has been some movement on the board yet. Yeah, Cassidy Peel is down a few spots. Seems like it could be another good quarterback class. We've seen a Utah QB go number one overall before. You guys know Alex Smith. Uh, Terrell Claxton seems like he could be cut from the same cloth. Although that good to great throw power makes me think. I don't know. I will say though, just from a preliminary glance, there, there really doesn't seem to be any unbelievable, oh my goodness, I wish we had a first round pick prospect. So I like that. You know, there obviously could be some really good ones I'm just not seeing. But overall, it doesn't really seem to be too unbelievable and as for the linebackers i mean i'm not like overwhelmed looks like a good athlete though that could change things but the wide receivers are supposed to be quite good and i don't really see anyone that looks very good alani ball has potential alani ball maybe outside the first round this could be somebody we target John Whitfield looks like he could be okay. Great to elite speed and a deep route running. Prototypical deep threat. There is value at receiver down the board maybe, but at the top, I don't really see it. Tremaine Worthy could be worthy of our pick. I couldn't, I could not. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty bad, but you know what? I'm going to be saying it for Xavier Worthy all next draft cycle i'm sure brian burns is gonna be a free agent though so you think with the panthers not trading him and his contract expiring the next season they would absolutely be looking to extend him as soon as possible Derek brown probably the same deal jeremy chin is in here cj henderson a lot of big time free agents for us and we're gonna absolutely look to bring back at least these top three guys uh, you know excluding tim boyle Gonna be expensive. He's a top flight edge rusher, but he wants to come back. This seems like a really reasonable deal to me. And Brian Burns is back for five years. Derek Brown, also gonna be expensive. Yeah, he's getting over uh, 10 million here. But we might raise the money a little bit. And Derek Brown is back as well. It, it seems like it's scaling down in terms of interest. But if we just pay Jeremy Chin a lot, I think he is gonna go ahead and wanna resign. He's actually a little bit more expensive than I would like. But he also returns. I want to keep the core of the team together. Frankie Louvu, like, kind of part of that. I don't know. Is he going to want, like, 8 mil per year? Frankie Louvu just probably not worth that. Maybe, like, a one-year deal where I raise the money a little bit. Yeah, he doesn't want it. LaVisca seems pretty affordable, but he's not really interested, so we're going to have to overpay him. That's a reasonable contract as it stands. And then CJ Henderson, I also want back. He's young, 
He is talented. I think he eventually will find his footing in the NFL. Hasn't fully happened yet. Hasn't really, you know, fully established himself after being a top 10 pick by the Jaguars. But the talent is absolutely there. I think I think he's going to end up figuring it out and being a really good player. So, you know, that's obviously uh, the, I guess, the optimistic way to look at, at CJ Anderson. But we will see. Only time will tell. And we do go 13 and 4. The Commanders made the playoffs at 7 and 10. What does the NFC East look like? That happened. Usually don't check this, but... Oh. It's just the NFC in general was bad. The NFC must have been terrible. Hold on a second. Wow, I mean... Look at the amount of teams that won seven or fewer games. Quite a few. I guess not that unusual, but the sheer amount of teams that won seven on the nose... Really, really bizarre. We'll check out the stats and awards for our season... Stephen Beach, unreal rookie season. Did, as we switch to Kansas City Playbook, did just start launching picks. But about 4,700 yards, 39 touchdowns to 17 interceptions. It's not a bad rookie year. Rushing. Chuba Hubbard getting a lot of carries. We need a better running back. He's putting up... This is why you can't value yards and touchdowns and even yards per game when you talk about a running back and how good they are because they are doing... You know, sub four yards per carry. You got to factor in the offensive line as well. But just because they get 325 carries and 1,200 yards, you, oh man, they got 1,200 yards and 16 touchdowns. They're amazing. They might not be. We got to put things into perspective. DJ Moore, great season. Terrace Marshall, great season. Tommy Tremble, really performing. LaVisca Chenault, great year. Very interesting with the hybrid playbook choice, but. It is what it is. 12 tackles for loss for Brian Burns, 10 for Derek Brown, 9 for the rookie Shamir Burgess, who had a great year, but Brian Burns stole the show. 19 and a half sacks, 10 and a half for Burgess, and then interception, Dante Jackson had four, Horn with three, Henderson with two. Simulating through the wild card, we should win this game, and we do 28-7. Commanders really don't put up much of a fight, and the Lions shouldn't either. They snuck into the playoffs in what was a super weak NFC. They should not really pose much of a threat. However, it is Madden Simulation. We've seen crazier things happen. We could be going home easily here. I'm uh, afraid of a one-score game. But we'll see if we can beat the Lions and advance the conference championship. And we don't. It's a one-score game. We lose by a touchdown. We only put up 10 points. Offense, man, they just uh, didn't come to play, unfortunately. We do make it a bit further in the playoffs this season, and uh, we'll have something to work more uh, toward in year three. Season recap had the Chiefs back in the Super Bowl. This time they win it, though, under Patrick Mahomes' Super Bowl MVP performance. Russell Wilson is your MVP. Jonathan Taylor, Offensive Player of the Year. Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year. And your Rookies of the Year, nobody from our team. Tyrone Samuels and Manny Bowman. And uh, both NFC teams as well. So we miss out on Rookie of the Year altogether, which means probably no development trait increases for either of our top rookies, which is unfortunate, obviously. And um, yeah, I mean, you hate to see it. I think 17 interceptions really killed our rookie quarterback's chances. If he only threw like 13, 14, I think he had a better chance to do it. But he does stay at star development. Chuba Hubbard goes up to star. And then defensively, Brandon Smith and Frankie Luvu go up to star. I'm telling you, Brandon Smith could be developable. If we started him from year one, we could be looking at a you know, mid to high 70s player. He's approaching that anyway. But I think we're going to continue to try and develop him. But we just, uh, unfortunately... Did not manage to win Rookie of the Year. Otherwise, we'd be in top-tier shape. Not quite. Luvu's 27. What does he want here? I don't really want to give him a four-year deal. I don't want to franchise tag him either. Three-year contract. Accept that. He's going to test free agency. I'd like to re-sign him. You're going to see the franchise tag is unbelievably high. $25 million because it's factoring in edge rushers maybe i could have moved him to inside linebacker gonna need a kicker damian wilson i'm gonna let walk 
I'm going to try and re-sign Frankie Louvu in free agency, but he, of course, is going to walk for now. He's going to test free agency at the very least. And uh, here we go. Nick Bosa is here. We don't need him. Justin Herbert's here. We don't need him. Hollywood Brown is an interesting option. Steven Beach has been upgraded to franchise quarterback tag. Hollywood Brown could be a decent grab. Logan Wilson, though, is just if Frankie Louvu was even better. He's very expensive. They have to figure out a way to get off-ball linebackers to be paid like off-ball linebackers compared to... And I, okay, there are some exceptions like Roquan Smith, but is Logan Wilson really going to get a contract that looks like this? Unlikely. I know these contracts get bigger and bigger and bigger every year, but I don't think he's going to get something like this, but I would like him on the team, so I'm going to pay him. Hollywood Brown would just be a really... He's really expensive, though. Do I want to do that? I could take the money down, make this a little bit a little bit better for us, and it's just kind of, you know, we'll throw an offer at him if he decides to sign. Great. If he doesn't, we'll look a different direction. Offense in general looks pretty good. And then defensively, we're looking at linebacker, of course. We have Tier Tart, but we could still look to upgrade at defensive tackle. Ed Oliver is an option. If Ed Oliver has interest, I might try and convince him to sign with the Panthers but he does not. So I'm probably going to avoid him despite having superstar X factor. It's just a scheme fit issue. Darnell Mooney is here, which I might even take him over Hollywood Brown head to head, not in Madden, but that would not be a bad option for us if Hollywood Brown decides to go a different direction. So we'll offer on all those guys. And Hollywood Brown still out here, as is Frankie Louvu. But we did bring in Darnell Mooney, Logan Wilson as well. I'm going to withdraw my offer on Hollywood Brown and hopefully sign Frankie Louvu. And we do. Do. Louvu. Nick Bosa, the Giants. I'm in. Oh, yeah, we need a kicker. Do we need a punter? I think Johnny Hecker's still under contract. I'll look to see if he made it in here. I think we have a punter, so. Uh, I'll offer Jake Elliott. And we got Jake Elliott. So Logan Wilson is going to move inside to inside linebacker. He's face scanned into the game. I think that's actually a fairly new development. I don't think he was last year. Haven't rebuilt the Bengals this year, so haven't really seen that. But he does go up to an 87 overall. I like the linebackers quite a bit, actually, with Lou Vu and Brandon Smith. Both should be at their correct position of left and right outside linebacker. Jordan Poyer is starting to regress, which we knew would happen. Corners are decent. D-line looks decent. I like the team in general. We just are kind of missing that top tier running back. Ooh, and Cassidy Peel is back up to the number one player in the class. I don't really have picks though, if you recall. So I don't really know what we're going to do here. I like the entire team. It's kind of a, a weird spot where I'm just waiting for guys to develop. I don't really feel like we need to draft anybody. I don't know. Oh no, John Whitfield. John Whitfield moved up a lot. I forgot about the receivers. Yeah, the receivers are what I want, but one moved up all the way from like round two to three or three to four to one to two. Not what we want. Yeah, we don't pick until the end of the second round. Now there are things that can be done about that for sure. Ooh, Alani Ball is also a round one to two projection now. Was he always? They may have been. I thought they were kind of on the outside. Alani Ball looks really good. Great speed, catching traffic. A lot of stuff has potential with him. He's 6'2", 233. Physical archetype with that type of speed is extremely impressive. We do have Darnell Mooney now. So I feel like despite elite speed, maybe even like, you know, 98, 99. I don't know that we necessarily need John Whitfield. He has A, deep route running, B, release. Short and medium route running are not very good. Alani Ball probably interests me a little bit more just because I think he's got the complete package and uh, it's rare to see this type of athleticism at 6'2", 233 with a physical archetype, I would say. So I'm just a little bit more intrigued. They both look great. I wouldn't be mad about either of them. We're trading a second round pick next year, a fourth this year, a fifth next year to move up to 33. And my thought process on this 
is one of the two receivers will be available at that spot, I would expect. So we'll pretty much have our choice, I would expect. Things could change. They're both still available. And we know John Winfield is like a guaranteed round one talent. But I'm going to take a chance on Alani Ball. He seems more intriguing to me. He does have hidden dev and seems like a really fun option. This is like LaVisca Chenault in a way. 91 acceleration, 85 agility, 92 direction of change. Why did I say direction first? 93 jumping, 93 speed. Strength is actually pretty high at a 73 as well. I feel like we're getting, you know, our hybrid receiver running back with that pick. So I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. And I guess we could trade LaVisca now. Getting hidden dev is pretty nice, but we don't really have to. We don't need another receiver. We just, we just don't at this point. We have four or five good ones, which I think puts us in a really good spot. Got to remember how much we throw the football. Just running back is really the only thing I would maybe do. Okay, Max Youngblood. I like the look of him and Cameron Fox. The the power backs, I always like the look of. Especially when they have elite strength. But A break tackle, A carrying. Pretty good stuff. I might take a chance on him. And then Pat Young. No, Cameron Fox on day three. Very fast. But only listed at good speed. But that's still very good. A break tackle, A carrying. For a day three projection power back with that type of speed? Why would I not? We'll simulate to the end of round two and maybe consider trading down. We don't pick until the seventh though. Ugh. Minnesota offering us a third and a fourth this year to trade down. So I'm going to do that. We're going to move down. Not even that much. And if one of the running backs is gone, I'm kind of like, so what on that? I kind of want to take both. And uh, they're not on my favorites list. That's right. But Youngblood and Fox both should be available. We're going to take Max Youngblood first. Does have hidden dev. Looks very well-rounded. 90 acceleration, 90 agility. Change of direction, not terrible. Jumping, speed, strength, all look pretty good. Another Northern Illinois guy. Why do I feel like we looked at one of those guys in the last draft? Northern Illinois, I definitely looked at. I can't remember who it was or what position or any of those details. We'll take Cameron Fox with this one. This is the player that looks more intriguing to me. Probably has normal Devi. Doesn't. It's hidden. 92 acceleration, 88 agility for a power back. Good speed, strength, change of directions, okay. I feel like we got some real good value on running backs. Draft recap. Ooh. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. We, there's a lot to talk about. So Alani Ball is a 75 overall. 93 speed. Route running is not great. What are his rushing attributes? They're actually pretty good. They're pretty good. 88 spectacular catch, 86 catch in traffic. This is a really fun player. And then I've done something that I don't know that I've done the entire year. A 78 overall running back and a 77 overall running back in rounds three and four. I was not kidding about getting steals here. Youngblood is 6'1", 235, power back, but very close to elusive back as well. Trucking's an 85. Juke and spin are just okay. Carrying's very high. Agility is very high. He's got 90s in a lot of different spots. Really good player. And then the other running back, I was a little bit more excited about him. He's one overall less. 6'1", 226. Does have more speed. Does look a bit more well-rounded to me. Uh, but, uh, they're very similar. But, I, I mean, we just got two really good running backs midway through. I like that that's happening because that's something that happens in real life. There is an 80 overall tight end in this class. Cassidy Peel was a 78. But we got the third highest rated player in the entire draft. And then if you count, you know, 77 in that top five range, we also got a top five player as well. And then, you know, the receiver wasn't too bad either. I don't know. I feel like that was one of the most fun drafts I've had because we didn't really have top picks to work with. And we still did very well. Yeah, so I'm going to bench Chuba Hubbard. Sorry about that, champ. But that's going to happen. 
we just have we got some talent i wonder what a lonnie ball is at tight end can he block at all pretty bad pretty bad at blocking but maybe he's just like a true vertical threat tight end I kind of want to consider making him like an H-back type player. He is a 76 overall tight end. But, you know, I don't I don't want him to be a traditional tight end. I'm thinking more of like, you know, like a, uh, like a Janu Smith. I don't want to say Delaney Walker because he was an exceptional blocker, but the other Titans tight end, formerly Janu Smith. All right, so things look pretty good. I want to start the rookie running backs. Because, I mean, if they were ranked so highly, I, I think there's a chance that one of them at least would have higher than star dev. Only four and three at the midseason mark. A little bit disappointing. Our defense is still really good. Our offense is not as good as I would like us to be, but we're not bad. Still on track to make the playoffs. Just a couple of swings haven't gone our way, clearly. Ball has star dev. Tommy Tremble, you are tight end one again. Now, it's a little bit surprising that uh, our running backs dev traits have not been revealed. I guess they're splitting too much time, I would guess. And it's not because of where they are in the depth chart, four snaps away for Youngblood. Because uh, I think Youngblood is our power back as well. No, Fox is our power back. Youngblood is the third down back. Who's not actually very good in that spot. We could go Chuba Hubbard. That's a possibility. But I'm interested to see what their dev traits are. That, I'm going to start the one with the higher dev trait. I think that pretty much goes without saying. I'm not sure how Fox is going to be or how far along he's going to be. We'll simulate one week. This should reveal one dev trait. Not going to make any trades at the midseason mark there. The trade deadline. Uh, we are 5-3. and three. That was a big win over the Chargers. Should be able to beat the Raiders as well. And let's see our dev trait here. Star dev. I'm going to go with Fox. He could also have star dev. Very possible, but I want to find out. I'm trying to find out. He's not even close. But he also looks really good, so I wouldn't just mind starting him anyway. They're all really close in overall and and skill set. But maybe Chuba Hubbard should be the third down back. Might make the offense a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, Youngblood's still going to play. We just have a three running back rotation, which a lot of teams do. So that's not that unusual. But 5-3, 87 overall team. We are very good. I'd like us to be a little bit better. But we're pretty good. Darnell Mooney face scanned into the game now as well. He goes up to an 84 overall. And we do make the playoffs 12-5. and five. So our second half of the season was very good. Which is always nice to see. We got off to a bit of a rocky start. Lost our first two games of the season. Lost against the Niners. But look at this second half. Well, lost to the Giants, lost to the Commanders, NFC East getting our number, but five wins to end the season, very nice. And I would guess that our dev trait will be revealed for the running back, and uh, it's not. He is an 80, will be revealed in time. He looks really good, though. 92 speed, 92 acceleration, agilities, close to 90, trucking, close to 90, carrying's great, he's never going to fumble. Like You like a player like that. Just consistent and good. And then defensively, you know, players getting better. Steady improvement. It's a great overall team. I'm really happy with where it is right now. But we just got to start. I guess, I not even start, but we just got to continue to win. Can we beat the really tough to beat Cowboys in the playoffs? Nope. And we'll head into what could be the final season. Disappointing. The Cowboys are just really, really strong in simulation. They go to the Super Bowl like every year. Season recap has the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl. Zeke is your Super Bowl MVP. And they beat the NFL MVP, Lamar Jackson. Cooper Cup, Offensive Player of the Year. TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year. And then Bobby Parham, the quarterback for the Commanders. And Kareem Harbour, the end for the Packers, are your rookies of the year. Don't remember seeing any of those players in the draft. Maybe Parham. Okay, players ready to negotiate. Dante Jackson doesn't want to come back. Don't care. I'm going to bring him back anyway. Jordan Poyer, we do have to let go. Austin Corbett, Johnny Hecker, I'd like to bring back. JC Horn. Nobody wants to re-sign though. Why? They all have different non-team-based motivations. Chuba Hubbard, of course, is going to walk. 
We have a lot of free agents, but we do have a lot of money to bring them back. Dante Jackson going to play for a new team next year. I just, I, I, I forgot that he was not interested and I had to give him more money. So that's a bit of a mistake for sure. We'll uh, get Corbett. JC Horn in a test free agency. We're going to need some corners. Not going to franchise tag. Tommy Tremble should be back though. And he is. Terrace Marshall probably don't need. We're going to have to do a lot of negotiating in free agency. A lot. Jalen Waddle is here. We don't need him. Or Keenan Allen. But is very good and would be a good fit for the team. But we need to focus on our corners. And the cornerback class is just our corners. Okay, so Fox did have star dev. DJ Moore goes up to superstar X Factor. Beach goes up to superstar all looking very good there. I am going to move Alani Ball back to receiver. It was a fun little experiment, but he's going back to receiver. Ryan Burns goes up to superstar X Factor. And we need a safety that's right. Safety, defensive tackle, we lost to Eric Tart. Again, we have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith could be a good one-year rental type player. Just trying to win a Super Bowl. Harrison Smith, uh, welcome to the team, hopefully. I'm going after Nate Hobbs instead of Dante Jackson. He's younger, and um, I, I just think that's going to be better for us. And then Grover Stewart, I am going to offer as well. Eric Armstead's in there. But uh, we're going to go ahead and see what happens. Still going after Grover Stewart. Might increase his offer. Did get Harrison Smith, Nate Hobbs, J.C. Horn, and Tommy Townsend. So we got everybody that I wanted. Great. Honestly, Aaron Jones for a year is a lot better than what we have. I like my running backs. I know they were good picks. But Aaron Jones is just such a big improvement. And we got, we got Aaron Jones. Grover Stewart signed elsewhere. Okay. Well, we still have money for a defensive tackle. We could just bring Tier Tart back. Which, at least for now, that's what I'm going to do. Still might look at defensive tackle either in the draft. Maybe I'll look to trade for one. First round pick could get me a pretty good one, I bet. Not really blown away with anything I've seen in the draft so far. Just to be honest. I mean, this, this tight end actually looks pretty good. Catching traffic isn't great. Fine athlete. I'm going to check out three defensive tackles. This is what will probably be the final year. So I'm going for it all. I think... I think I'm going to end up uh, trading for a defensive tackle. The defensive tackles would have to be really, really good for me to really consider them. And they're fine, but not going to be taking them. Okay, we have the cap room. Where is Aaron Donald? He's a 96 overall. He's 34 years old, and he wants to win a championship with the Panthers. And it's going to cost multiple first-round picks to get him at the very least. I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, trading two first-round picks for Kenny Clark. It's going to have to do. And then round three. I, I mean, I don't really have any plans to take any player here. I don't, I don't know what I would do. My assistant GM can figure it out. Assistant GM did not do a good job. We're going to have to have a conversation in the office because that sucked. To be fair, the class does not appear to be great, but I need better results. So the team does just look really, really good. Aaron Jones, I hope, is going to be impactful this year. Getting Kenny Clark, I think, is going to be really good for the production of the other players on the defensive line, even if it doesn't really impact or even if he doesn't really have a huge impact on the stat sheet, I think he's going to help the other players do well, eating up blocks or whatever. I don't know how it impacts in simulation. I wish I knew any of these things, but corners look pretty good. Got Nate Hobbs, JC Horn back. Safeties look good. I like the way the team looks. LaVisca can play in the slot. Brandon Smith still developing. This team looks like it should be really successful. I'm excited. I'll see you at the midseason mark. We'll do a little bit of a check-in, a little temperature check. And this is an 88 overall team. We should win, you know, probably about five games at this point, maybe more. Only three and three at the midseason mark. But that is at the top of our division. 
What do we need to change? I think maybe the offensive playbook. Chiefs just doesn't really seem to be doing the job for us for, for whatever reason. Our offense continues to be about middle of the pack or worse. Look at the Bucks, dude. The Bucks are an 86 overall and they're one in five. I think, and I'll confirm this based on how they're doing, but I think Dallas playbook is going to be the one here. The Jags are undefeated. Cowboys are four and three. But the Chiefs offense continues to perform well. The Jags are crushing it. I don't trust it though. And the Jaguars are using Kansas City playbook. And I mean, defense, of course, too. Why are we not performing in that offense? I don't get it. Our personnel seems good enough to me. I know people are going to say it's the scheme fit. That is only for XP. Only XP. So we're just, we're just sticking to it. We're going to go to the playoffs. I think we're a playoff team. We should be. Week 17, we are 9 and 6. And we have to play the 8 and 7. Not good Saints who are going to beat us and maybe end our season. Uh, I mean, having the same record going into the final week of the season would scare me a lot. Hopefully that's not what happens. We beat them and that guarantees a playoff berth. But oh my goodness. I was way too close. And the Saints made the playoffs anyway? Okay. So I was... <laughs> I guess I had nothing to worry about. We got killed by the Panthers, or the Patriots. We are the Panthers. We got killed by the uh, Patriots in Week 18. I don't know why we're not good. Don't know why. Steven Beach just keeps launching too many interceptions is what it comes down to. Like, they're not terrible numbers. We might have to go more ground-focused and less tight end-focused. Tommy Tremble putting up amazing numbers... That is the Kansas City offense. Maybe we just don't have the tight end for it. That's absolutely possible. Logan Wilson with a ton of tackles. Brian Burns, I saw was less productive, but that's because Shamir Burge is starting to play really well. Former number two overall pick, 15 tackles for loss, 15 and a half sacks. Kenny Clark was awesome. Derek Brown was awesome. Brian Burns was still quite good. And uh, I, I, our defense has played great. If you're in a 4-3 defense... The Panthers have to be near the top of the list for the playbooks that you'd want in Madden 23. Bills, Chiefs, Cowboys, probably the other four, I would say. But this offense, for one reason or another, is not clicking. I'm going Dallas. Vertical zone run. We have the running back for it. And um, hopefully it works out a little bit better. A little bit disappointing so far. Wild card round of the playoffs will happen in the game. And I just want to ensure that we win it. We're 90 overall. I don't want to go home. If we have to jump in for a drive, I'm going to do it. We are up, well, okay, 24 to 3. This is what we wanted. Just our team to actually play like it's way better than the Saints are. And they are. This shouldn't be close. And it's not really 37 to 20, 37, 27. Okay, that, that should be the game. Ended up being a 6.1 possession game. But... 40 to 34 is the final. Our defense really did not play as well as they should have. Our offense continues to disappoint me. It's this quarterback, man. What's his deal? Rams have actually made it fairly deep into the playoffs for a team that's only a 79 overall. So I guess probably a good thing they didn't trade away Aaron Donald to me because now they can use him against my squad in the playoffs. We are plus 11 overall, but they still have some superstar caliber players that could carry this team. This is a cool view. I don't think we've seen anything like that this year. I guess I haven't played the Panthers and Giants franchise at night, no less. So I guess I wouldn't have seen that. It is a very close game so far. 10 to 6, now 17 to 6. 24 to 6, and that is all she wrote. Our defense clutched up, played out of their minds. And um, got the win. And now the Giants have made it to the conference championship. Steven Beach, play better. You know what it might be? Did the CPU just upgrade strong arm the entire way and never touch short and medium accuracy? Yeah, his short accuracy is terrible. So if we're not throwing deep down the field, he's not hitting them. Rainy game, and we are actually playing from behind for the first time in these playoffs. And by a lot, it's 21 to 6. Our defense did not show up to play. 
but there's a lot of football left as we're back in this game. 21 apiece. Giants take the lead by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Giants extend their lead. And we might have to jump in on offense, see if we can't get a quick score. Time is running out. LaVisca Chenault in the slot. I like. Let's go to the Super Bowl. Snap the ball, please. I like Tommy Tremble. That pass wasn't even close. And I actually thought Tommy Tremble was wide open on that. We're going to roll out. Throw on the run. Out of the reach of LaVisca Chenault. It's no good. Fourth and seven. Game essentially on the line here. I'd love to hit Darnell Mooney. That's probably who I'm looking at the most here. We're going to have to step up, though. You got to fight for it. Beach first down. He's got a rushing touchdown in this game. That was a huge first. Working off play action. We're going deep down the field. Oh, it's underthrown. Shoot. We had him if we had the time. It's a really good throw, though. I'd love to score before the two-minute warning so we can use that to our advantage. We might go back to the same play, see if we can't get a great result. I'd love to just get another play before the two-minute warning here. Let's go straight four verts. Snap the ball. They're not ready for it. Throw into the slot. Dropped it. And there's a two-minute warning. Yep. Unfortunate. We have three timeouts, though. It just would have been nice. First and goal from the two. We got a free extra yard because of roughing the pass. So we're going to try and punch it in here on the ground. And we do with Aaron Jones making it a very close game here. But we're going to need a stop. We're going to need a stop. Second and six. We got to bring up Harrison Smith to make a tackle. And um, we actually don't get a chance to do that. Saquon just weaved his way through. That sucks. It's a big tackle, though. Time uh, very much not on our side. Is the game over? I don't think so, but it doesn't look good. Are they going to pass here? Surely not. No, they're not. Okay, great defense. We we have to uh, we have to let him score. Have to let him score. And our chances don't look good. We need an onside kick. We need to get incredibly lucky. You need to be able to catch that. That's a touchdown. It just ends up being too much to climb. Uh, our our team just really didn't show up the way I wish they would have. But as I always say, the point of these videos is not to win the Super Bowl. That would obviously be nice as DJ Moore goes back down to Superstar. That would be nice. But the main focus for me is building the team and seeing what happens. We know how Madden Sim gets. It's really frustrating at times. Logan Wilson up to uh, Superstar X Factor as well. Frankie Louvu down. But yeah, it, it's really, really frustrating with Madden Sim sometimes. But the goal that I have is make the best team possible and hopefully it works out. We didn't end up winning the Super Bowl this time. Having a coughing fit, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's fitting because we choked. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.